Hello, this is Tony. Welcome back to my channel. And today I like to discuss the linear amplifier and the preamplifier. The linear amplifier is used to increase your output power, so you get more watts out of your transceiver. And the preamplifier um, increases uh, your reception and also the distortion, of course. Um, this bunch I found in an old box, or they came with uh, a transceiver I bought on, on eBay. Um, let's see if they still work. And ju just I'd like to remind you that in most countries, the linear amplifiers, these ones are usually illegal to use on the CB, CB bands because you are, are, uh, are bound on the maximum power you are allowed to use. Um, but I still like to see if they work and then I put them back in the box. These things of course are just free to use, it just increases the, the signal on the receiver side. So um, let's see if they still work and how they work. Okay, after we cleaned up um, we're gonna try this one to to connect to the transceiver. I will use a transceiver with a variable uh, output so we do not uh, overload, uh, overload the driver of the amplifier because if you put too much power in it it will just overheat and it will distort the, the end result uh, signal. This one is also nice because it has also a pre-amplifier to receive the uh, to amplify the receiving signal so let's see what happens with that one and the silver one also has both but it is for two meters so for 144 megahertz so we're not gonna try that today we can try that later so i'm gonna set up i will put the power meter in between the the power amplifier and the transceiver so you can see how much power we put in and then at end result we will see on the radio test equipment our mechanic. Okay here is the setup the transceiver with uh, adjustable output power. Uh, this transceiver by itself already has, has plenty of power but uh, I'm using this one because um, we can uh, adjust output power. Then here we put the power meter in between how much uh, we can see how much power we put into the linear <laughs> which sometimes also is called a uh, heater because they uh, of kachel in the Netherlands because they produce a, a lot of heat and you will see it, it, it will use a lot of amps I connected here both the uh, transceiver and, uh, and the linear amplifier to the same power source so we will be able to monitor the amps so the first you see the 13.7 is the voltage and the last number the 0.3 is the amps the transceiver is using this transceiver is, is also made to, to, to give a lot of power so it's a little bit less efficient than, than the other one so we can hook up later uh, uh, just a 0 0.5 or a 4 watts uh, transceiver just to see the difference but okay then the so the power comes from the transceiver to the input power and then we put it here so first we try on half a watt you can see the lower scale 5 watts look at the lower number it goes to 0 0.5 this is switch off this is also 0 0.5 and yeah we lose a little bit of power and it draws already 1.6 amps which is a lot for half a watt but as I said this transceiver is really built for putting 30 watts output or something but we just really just uh, switch down the power so what does the power amplifier does so we switch set it to AM it's the same setting for FM we're not using the SSB so we switch it on let's see how much power we get out so we transmit it is a half in and we get out 1.5 already and we see the amps already go to 2.6 so let's see what it does when we put it to 1 watts 
transceiver set to 1 as you can see the power does and now we already produce 6.1 which is a lot and but we are almost at 4 amps at this really 2 watts on the input and now we have already 12 on the input and we draw away like 5 amps we go to 3 watts and then we are at 16.4 and 5 amps 5.8 amps even 4 watts on the input and we are at 17.6 you see it increases less and less so I think we are almost on the maximum of the linear amplifier okay we will try to find the maximum on the output just turn it up 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 uh, it doesn't go that far up anymore and then turn it down until it goes down that is about here so this is the maximum we should put in if you want not to break it and that would be around 5 watts so 5 watts is the maximum um, I would recommend to do 4 because it was almost the same 4 and 5 watts I think it was 18 watts or 18.3 so if you don't want to break it just put 4 and also you are sure that you oof it's really hot so I made a little list with input and output powers and as you can see you really need a proper power supply and uh, most of the, the cheaper power supplies, the 13.8 regulated ones, usually go to 5 or, or yeah, 3 or 5 amps. And as you see, you, you already go quickly to the 6.5. And that means that if it, uh, the power supply is re really working at its maximum, you could also get some dis distortion in your signal because uh, yeah, the, the DC probably will look uh, worse. Oh, I just wanted to have a look inside and as you can see uh, it's uh, more impressive from the outside than actually is on the inside uh, usually just big one transistor on the bottom that is mounted directly on the heatsink not sure you can see no you can't um, yeah it's it's mounted directly on the on the heatsink and you can see the three legs uh, sticking out so here it is connected to the PCB board um, yeah I will close it and we we'll try to test the other one okay same setup transceiver input power linear amplifier and our radio tester so let's see we put in 0 0.5 watts a little more and you see this one immediately goes to 6.5 and it, it is just below 3 amps well if you look at the other one if we put in 0 0.5 it only went to one and a half watts and 2.6 and so this one is a lot more effective in the low power yeah, if you look at uh, this list, because I just continue doing the same thing, uh, you can see that it uh, flattens out now. After we put uh, 2 watts, 3 watts, 4 watts, it, the difference doesn't, it doesn't increase that much. So I think the safest to use is between 2 and 3 watts, because after that you just dissipate in, in power now and this one really increases uh, here it just doubles and it doubles and it doubles again and then it just flattens out and the same is here but here it's already above 10 it really starts to go down so okay this one also seems to have a receiving amplifier at least it says rx in on and off like the tx and with the tx you really switch on and off the power amplifier so I uh, wonder if this really makes a difference. So I put the signal and I will just switch it on. Well, there's not much difference.
Maybe I need to lower it a bit more. And now you can start hearing distortion. Let's see. Yeah. It doesn't do anything. Okay, here we have the preamplifier. The other one, let's see if that works better. Put a little. Put another signal. It is 0 0.2, which is okay. Turn it down a bit. You can hear distortion. And then turn. Ooh, this one does work. How low can we go? How ah, would we go even below 1.1 one, one, one minutes? This works. This is nice. Okay, um, in conclusion. Um, the preamp seems to work, the power amplifier seems to work, but I want to remind you again that in most of the countries it's illegal to use the power amplifier and also uh, a very good antenna setup would help you a lot better than, than these devices because the preamplifier here in the lab of course works very well because we do not have too much distortion so we really amplify the signal but um, yeah when you have a bad antenna setup um, you will also receive a lot of distortion and that will also be amplified by the preamplifier so that, that would not help you too much the same is for all this power if your antenna setup is not good you will just dissipate power in your cables or so again a good antenna setup is always the best and you don't need these things and also you don't need to be illegal to do it so look at your proper antenna and i will talk about that in another video so thank you for watching and uh, if you find my videos interesting in the right top you can click to subscribe and thank you very much